a little. All right, we're live. So welcome, man, to our Connected Yoga Teacher Collective Live. Uh, I'm thank super you excited so that you're here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shannon. I am super excited and I'm super honored to be here. You know that I'm a big fan of uh, the Connected Yoga Teacher podcast. And yes, I'm happy to, to be here today helping other teachers to figure out some parts of the technology of online teaching. It's really exciting. So tell our viewers where you're tuning in from because it's this evening for you. It's morning yes. for me. Tell us where yes. you're <laughs> where you're teaching yoga, where you're calling from. Yeah, so it's uh, it's Wednesday evening here. It's uh, it's uh, nine p.m. I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. Yeah, and which. And mm -hmm. for those of you who are here live or watching the replay, can you put a little hello in the comments and tell us where you're, where what time it is, where what day it is, and where you're, where you're located as well? That'd be super exciting. So Manu, I'm really excited because I saw that you were maybe I saw it first on Instagram or maybe you told me in a call that we had that you had figured out how to do a video and cue at the same time, and that you've been doing this for a year? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's correct. I, I started basically uh, teaching online like one year ago, because I moved here to Bangkok, and I didn't have like a community of people that I knew here. So I thought it was a good idea for me to start like trying to build up some online and try to put my classes online because many of the people that I knew they 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 didn't live in here necessarily but they would they wanted to take classes with me so you know it was just like one year ago not many people were there teaching online so I had there was no rush to learn online things so I actually had time to to kind of see how it works what was working best for me and just like in this process, I found a really nice YouTube video, which I can send you the link later on if you like. Sure. It's one of the best video that I've seen. Like they explain everything about Zoom. So Zoom okay. is the platform that I'm using. And um, through that video, you know, I saw that the, the, the guy who was demonstrating everything, he at some point he was like sharing the screen. And that basically blew my mind because I was just like, wow, like if I can share the screen, that would be like a very, very good tool. I thought so because I, at that point, I was already trying to build up, you know, like kind of on my online presence and putting video on social media. And then I thought that I could use those video that I was using for my social media which were demonstrating some kind of exercise or some kind of uh, flow or yoga posture that I could use them with my classes so that I could give people a visual, um, a visual uh, prompt, let's say, that way. Right. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So they can see mm -hmm. the visual and then you can see your students. So you do, that, you teach both one-on-one -on -one and group. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's correct. And, you know, I think that are, there are one of the advantages of doing this is that, as you say, you can still see your students when you share the video. Um, and I, I'm not sure you can see, um, uh, you, sh you can see up to a certain number. Like when you share your video, you cannot see everyone who is in the call if it's a big group, but right. at least uh, it gives you the opportunity to be in front of the screen, you know? And like for me, it feels like kind of more in control of what's happening in the class. For instance, uh, I actually, when I was teaching in my studio, I would use the visual, I would share the screen and sometimes I would also demonstrate myself because I had a wireless microphone that I would use and I had enough space to just like set up my, my mat behind and, and just like I could kind of have 
I could be in front of the screen, but I could also walk back and, and stay in the in the mode where I could demonstrate sometimes. So I would usually use both. But you know, sometimes what happens with demonstrating, if you have to teach many classes a day and you need to demonstrate, we know how that is. Like eventually you pay the toll, you know, of of demonstrating and your body feels like super tired. So the the sharing video thing would allow me to just focus on what's going on on the screen and use the the recordings that i already had that i use i previ previously used for tutorials in youtube and social media and and the feedback that i've been getting from my students has been very positive so I'm really curious about how you show this video. I know that you're going to show us kind of a demonstration of that, but I'm curious, mm -hmm. let's say you're going to teach a group class and it's an hour long. Do you have an hour long video of the yoga? Mm, no, so <laughs> that's a very good question. <laughs> so what I would do, it's um, I would do short clips of each and every uh, let's say maybe f little flow that okay. I want to demonstrate or any like kind of, I, I could say flow, like a little flow if we are talking about asana practice or any kind of exercise. You know, I'm also a personal trainer. So sometimes I also teach some, some fitness. So I would also put the, the, the exercise. So I record in small chunks. So I would say, Okay, let's do uh, today in today's class. I'm going to do. I'm going to teach sun salutations, and maybe in these sun salutations, I want to teach because I have many beginners. I want to teach them all the variations that they could take if they, for instance, from going to plank into downward dog, uh, the transition that they can take, and all of the little things. So I would just like record a video of the sun salutation going through those transitions. And then uh, that's that's it. I then going to record another, like I'm gonna record different videos for, for different things. And the good okay. thing about this is that it sounds like a lot, but actually uh, like um, those videos you can, always use again and again and again and not only for sharing in your classes but also as i say you can share them on social media and it becomes content basically right oh that's amazing so you can use it as your content i know bitsy's here uh it's 10 a.m for her and valerie as well in boston and judy in new hampshire uh, and Katie's here. So I wonder if they have any questions for you. Uh, I'm, I have tons of questions now. So I'm wondering, <laughs> how do you record these snippets? Like when you first started recording them, what did you record from? Or what do you use now? So I use my phone, basically. Okay, I use my phone, I have a tripod. Um, I just place the tripod, I uh, put the phone in my tripod and, and just like uh, do the practice in my mat and then that's it. So you just do your practice sort of and do that flow. Uh, do you have it written out? Do you know what you're going to do? Or I, I know what I'm going to do. I, I take some notes. Let's say like while I'm practicing during the, uh, the week, while I'm doing my practice or maybe I'm taking classes with someone else, with someone else I have like a, a notebook and I would just like take notes of, oh, this is like something nice, something that pops to my mind or I got some inspiration and I write that down. And then I'm going to take one day, usually I do, the, I do this on Fridays and that day I'm gonna go and do the recordings, but actually the recording time, I don't consider that to be my practice time because okay. I'm kind of like kind of making like little chunks. It's like kind of recording time. Okay, so I have all the notes of all the inspiration and ideas that came during the week. And now I'm going to set up myself in a place where I can record myself and, and do this little, little video. Okay, oh, that's amazing. Does that make sense? 
Yes. Bitsy has a good, good question leading up to, can you show us like pretend we're on zoom? We're not actually, we're using StreamYard right now, but it's really similar to zoom that you could mm -hmm. show us what mm -hmm. it's like. So she, Bitsy's wondering how you use the clips when you're teaching. Okay. So usually in zoom, it's uh, it's very similar to here and you would have down in the center of your screen, you will have like a little screen symbol that, sh that says share screen and okay i need to and so basically when you share the screen okay i'm sharing my screen now i think you should be able to see it yeah and i have my folder here with all of my video so these are some of the video this is for example the videos can you see the the little um video here the little windows yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is from my class last Monday. So I have this little uh, video and each one of them may last from, I don't know, maybe from one to three minutes or so. And so let's say I put them in order. This is the way I plan my class. I have like a kind of uh, depository of video and then I pick some and then I put them in order. And then I just go here, click on the video and i'm gonna be queuing so for instance if we are lying on the floor and then just then just let your legs drop to one side and turn your head to the opposite side and in this way i'm queuing i'm telling people what uh what what they should be doing and at the same time they have the video so they can see at any point what's going on this is i found is especially good for beginners because yeah. uh, you know when you're teaching beginners you can try to do your best uh cueing verbally but many of them are going to be looking and the reality is because i repeat i use these videos more than once at some point they got used and they don't need to look at the screen anymore but there is always someone new who joins the class and uh, this helps them not to get lost if you know what i mean right yeah. And so then do you ever have a point where you think, oh, I'm actually going to skip that part of the video or I'm going to go back or I pause Absolutely. It? Absolutely. That is a very good question. I'm trying to pause here, but... Uh, oh, that we, thing's in the way. Yeah, that thing's on the way. But with Zoom, uh, you don't have that, that thing on the way. So you can pause. Like, for instance, you can also move your video forward. You can get... Oh, maybe I can pause from here. I can pause. No. Anyway, with uh, with Zoom, you can just like stop for a moment if you want them to to uh, take a different um, to stay maybe for more than three breaths in a pose, and you want them to to get the pose a little bit deeper and stay for a little bit longer. Then you can pause. Okay. And then, yeah. do you ever reuse? Oh, here these we are. Clips? Here we are. Okay. I can hide. Them. You oh, good. Like for instance, I can I can control everything from here. I am seeing some, what some of my people are doing, and at the same time, I'm talking and I am cueing them through the exercise. Okay, so reach your left leg up, inhale, exhale, bring your heel down, keep your fingers, keep your toes pointing, and keep your lower back pressing the floor, keeping your tel your pelvis in a posterior tilt. Combine your movement with your breath. Basically, this is like kind of a simple example. Right. That's yes. so good to see the visual of how mm. you would do it. And then so your students can see it, but you can see them well and see how it's landing with them also. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like if I have a small group, I am able to, to see when I have a small group, I am able to see everyone. I think with Zoom, if you are sharing the screen, I'm not sure how many people you can see, but at least three you can see, three of them. Right. And then when uh, you can see what's going on, like uh, among those three, like for instance, if if especially if they are beginners and they are doing something that you think may hurt them or something that you find it's maybe you need to to tell them something, you have the opportunity to see what's going on. You see, and this is what uh, what I was mentioning before. It's easy to pause and say, for instance, you can tell them to take here for a few more breaths. 
Can right. you still see my my screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. So yeah, you're you can work with that. that. Right, because so, you could be like pause it and then say and exactly. Then so even even one video uh, can be so much uh, can give it so much, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So do you store yeah. all of those videos on your computer? I do. Let me just I just went to I do uh, store all my video in my computer. Like I have all this folder here, which is all the video and images. Sometimes I also share images. Can you still see my screen? Uh, now I can. Yep. Now I've got okay. it back up. So for instance, I also have like some kind of images. Sometimes I use video. Sometimes I use images. And okay. uh, I keep all of them in a folder. Uh, when I get tired of what I've been doing, I want to renew. I might be moving them to my um, to my uh, drive, and then I keep renewing. You know, I keep right. renewing, like uh, maybe once every week or once every two weeks. I will record like a few more videos so that my students they feel that they have some kind of new stuff. Right. Oh, that's so cool. And you have this library just waiting. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Bitsy's asking, what wireless mic do you use? So the wireless microphone that I use, uh, it's uh, the brand, it's uh, Boya. It's B-O-Y-A. And I could send you the, the link, uh, Shannon. So maybe if you sure. uh, you can then add to the notes, I can send you the, the link. But basically, um, it's, uh, yeah, very, uh, like when you go to wireless microphones, like look for them in the internet, I'm sure it's one of the first ones that is going to pop up in your search. Something that you want to be aware of, and uh, this is a good question, because when you look for microphones, uh, you want to make sure that that microphone is going to work on your computer. Okay. And I'm saying so because sometimes you have wireless microphones that are designed to be used with your camera or maybe with your phone, but maybe they don't have the, the computer little icon. So this is definitely something that you want to look and make sure that if you are going to use your computer for teaching, you want to make sure that the microphone that you're going to buy can be used on your computer. And right. So there is and, and so then when you're teaching, so that would be if you back up and you demo, do you always have that wireless mic ready to go? Say that again, please. So you had said that you use the wireless mic when you're going to demo. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, like, normally you would have these videos, that would be the demo. When would you use the wireless mic? Yeah, I I was using, you know, I was using the wireless microphone before COVID-19. <laughs> right. And the reason is because I, I was going down to my studio. I have a little studio, a little room, and it's... It's very small, but it's perfect for private classes or for online classes. So in there, I would set the computer like in a table as it is right now so that I could be sitting in uh, and sometimes share video and sometimes also watch and talk to my students. But sometimes I would go to the back, to, uh, the back of the room and the computer was set in a way that you would see me, and if I move backwards, you would see my the whole of the picture. It was like myself and the and the mat, so I could actually go back and forward, and sometimes maybe demonstrate something. And so having the wireless microphone um, kind of was giving me a little bit more of freedom of choice and. Uh, then what happened was we have we had COVID nineteen coming and I couldn't leave my place and right. at home like my living room is not big enough to do that so this is when since we started with the lockdown it's when I have started using the demonstration thing like I would say hundred percent right yeah with the with the videos with the short videos. with the videos yeah okay and the, 
Bitsy, just to clarify, yeah, they're on. They're not on Zoom. They're on the computer. That's where they are on your computer. Yes. So you have a folder with all of your video on your computer, and then you can share that with with Zoom. Something that I that I like to say. Uh, for those of you who want to try, it might take a few times uh, before, so maybe experiment that with your current students, or if you haven't done that with your students yet, maybe try with your friends or family. Uh, at first, sometimes can be a little bit tricky because you may think that you are sharing, but actually maybe people are not seeing. So feel free to ask people, are you seeing what I'm sharing with you right now? Can you see the, the video, what's going on? Uh, usually you would want to have the folder with all of the video of your class. You, you would want to have that folder open so that when you share screen from Zoom, you would have the option of access that folder and share right. what's going on in that folder. Does that make sense? Right. That makes a lot of sense. Bitsy, mm -hmm. don't apologize. She said, sorry for all the questions. Your questions are really good. She said, what format uh, are the videos are welcome. In? We're here for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here to do. Yeah. One one little question I like to, to add, Shannon, is that uh, actually the way I, I would work, I would keep that folder with all of the with all of the video there. But also I would let's say um, press on the video. Yeah. And I would pause, like I could do, you could do all these things while the class is going on. And it might, may sound like this is like so much going on, but actually it requires a little bit of practice and you're going to be fine. But basically you would click on the video that you want to play. And the moment starts to play, you will hit pause. Okay. And then you go back to your Zoom screen and then you share the screen. And then when you share the screen, you have the option of going directly to that video that is pause. Right, right. Does that make sense? Give, yes, it makes total sense once, I know what you're saying in Zoom in that you have the option to share like different things. So it's mm -hmm. worth really playing around with it. Our yeah. connected yoga teachers could do that. What yeah. are the, do you know what format your videos are in? Um, is it MP4? Hmm. I think it, it's MP4. It's so do you mm -hmm. edit them as well? Like you, you get them off of your phone. How do you transfer them to your computer and how do you edit them? I, well, I, add, I transfer them to my computer with the cable of my okay. phone to my computer. And then I have, I do have a program for, for editing them because say when you start recording, like you press, you press play, press record on your phone, and then you're going to walk to your mat and then you're going to do whatever you're going to do. And then you're going to come back. Right. So it's, it's not necessarily hundred percent that you need to edit them. You can just like kind of skip that part. But I kind of like to edit them because, as I said before, I will use them anyway later for some post on social media or something. So they are edited already. Right. Mm. Uh, and then which way do you record with your camera? Is it the way you would take a photo or is it selfie mode? Um, I would take it like this way. This is the way you take a photo, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would put it that way. So that would be facing you. Mm -hmm. like, that, yes. Yeah. So let's say the, the tripod, it's holding my phone in here. So this is the side where you take the photo and I would be here in that side. Right. It's, it's, you can also do like that. I never don't like that, but I think you could do it. If you have a good camera on the front, I think you could do that too. Why right. Not? I've heard that the other way you get a better quality video. So that's probably. Like my, my thing is once I set my phone up, I have to like either get one of my family members or do a test to make sure that my head's still in the video. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. That, <laughs> that, is, that is part of the process too. Just like you want to yeah. do like a little short video before, just like make a testing, uh, set up the, the tripod, the camera, and just do a little tasting, make sure that your head is on the, on the video. Yeah. yeah, that's so good. Okay, so someone's saying, so the video's done with the computer, then kept in a folder of the computer and then shared on Zoom. That's totally right. In yeah. other words, we don't use Zoom camera. 
So the only thing that your computer camera would be used for on Zoom is then so that you can see your students. And I like mm -hmm. how you said also, you can only see a few of them when you share that video. Mm -hmm. That's important mm -hmm. to note because mm -hmm. otherwise we can have 15 students in our little right. grid, but all of a sudden they'll kind of disappear. Right. Uh, Carl's saying he loves these details. So helpful. I agree. Okay, great. <laughs> And uh, Bitsy's saying, uh, what do you use to edit? I don't know if we already uh, answered that. I, I can, it. I can. Uh, let me see if I can. Okay, I use a video editor software, which is called uh, Video Pad Editor. If you want to send me that, uh, then I'll make sure I put the YouTube video that you said, and there was the microphone and that one, and it, it will all be in our collective. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure that we have, I'm just writing myself a note here, a video editor. Mm -hmm. Those will be in the notes. Yeah, this one, this one here, I purchased it like, um, I think it was like a couple of years ago or so. And, but I know you may have some free options out there. So it might be worth it to see if you have some free options. For instance, I'm going to tell you something, uh, Shannon. There is this app in the phone, which is called in InShot. I don't know if you're familiar. Oh, yes, InShot, yes. Sometimes I even use InShot to, to edit some video, like directly, and it's kind of very easy. You know that app is very intuitive to use, and you can crop the, the beginning and the end of your video directly from your phone. Oh, nice. And then you can upload it to your computer and it's already um, edited. Okay, that's great and to know. In short, it's complete, in short, it's completely free and it has a lot of, it has a lot of stuff that you can do with it. But, you know, just for editing, like quick, just for quick editing, it's perfect. You don't need to buy any editor. Yeah. Carl's asking, does that cause a mirror effect? So how does that work? Mm, it doesn't. As far as I know, it doesn't. Uh, actually, I have seen the video recordings of my classes and sharing the way we are talking about, it doesn't create mirror effect. Right. And, mm, and that, you'd be able to see the same thing that your students would see as well. So you can say like lift your left leg and, and you can mm -hmm. see which one is your left yeah. leg. Yeah. Then it's it's uh, I, what I usually do. Like if I am teaching an in-person class, I would usually mirror myself, like because I like to face my students all the time. So yeah. I would usually mirror, and I would say, "Okay, take your right arm," and I'm using my left arm at that time. Right. <laughs> yeah. But with the with the online. I've been actually I haven't been I haven't been mirroring. I've been queuing my students the same way I am doing in the video. And I think they've been they've been I couldn't feel that they were finding some difficulties with that. Right. Mm. Yeah, that's that's something to add add to like the whole <laughs> thing that has to go in your yoga teacher brain. Uh, uh, Carl, you must use InShot as well. That's good. It'd be so good to see what other people are using as their editing software. So I use, I have a Mac, so I use iMovie. Uh, but there are some great ones out there for PCs mm. and Macs. So you can I share think iMovie is free, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, I would say mm -hmm. just like, I'm sure there are options there. You know, like you don't need to invest. I did uh, um, buy this like a couple of years ago because I really wanted to have like a... Uh, Thing, like with more options, you know, I was planning to put like a lot of content on social media, but actually it's not uh, necessary. I find it's good for, for subtitles and stuff, but, and for long video, like if I do long video, then it's, it's worth it to use that video editor, but otherwise you can do everything with InShot for free or with any other app. Now, I want to get into asking you about how people book with you. So let me see if I can share my screen now. Do, do, do. So if someone were to go to, you can see your home screen there. Where would they go? Mm -hmm. This is your, your home. Am I on your home page? Yes, this is my yeah. home page. 
and then so people would uh i have online and locally obviously right now i'm doing only online so people will go down and click online sessions and in here basically they have all the informations about my classes and this is something that i need to work on which is i know for um some people who are like kind of more tech or in, actually they invest maybe a little bit more of time into into these things you can make things easier like the way i have it set up right now for myself is not necessarily the the, the fastest one this is still okay. a working process for me and uh, basically whoever uh, when people want to join my classes they would generally drop me a note via an email or they would any of the of my social media and then uh you know they would tell me usually what they are interested and in when whenever they know what package they want to buy whether they want to do uh private or they want to join the group classes that i also been putting up then yeah. i would send them a paypal uh paypal link oh nice okay yeah um, then they then they uh, do the payment and then after they've done the payment i will send them a, an email which i basically have it ready copy paste which i basically send the same email for my, most of my clients maybe you change the name and a couple of things and and usually with zoom i'm using the same uh, it's a recurring meeting so it's okay. basically the same meeting and i'm using a password for security reasons right now because you know they recommend you use the password and yeah. i haven't been having any problems like usually they follow the link they put the password if there is something like at some point um i something would happen i would just email all of them with a new link or something but for the year that i've been teaching online i never had any problem with uh spams or someone coming in that i didn't expect or anything like that okay that's so mm -hmm. good to know mm -hmm. now i feel like when i share this it doesn't like i'm scrolling and you can't see that happening okay maybe <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay <laughs> let me try this again um, can, can you access that page uh, in your computer yeah let me try this in a different way share screen i'll just share because I wanted to show so you can see the homepage, but oh yeah, it's scrolling now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But when I clicked on the online session, oh, that's why, because I have to share only this tab. <laughs> that's me figuring it out here. Let me try it's, it. It's, it's, it's like that, you know, like for me also, it, you know, even when I started teaching, you know, like, of course, like we are sometimes not used to technology and these are things that happen and other stuff would happen in a live class. Yeah. Here in the, we have these little issues. This is what I wanted to ask you about this. This looks really nice and clean. I really like how this is a weekly schedule. And Thank this you. Sangha, the Sangha on Thursdays, Mm -hmm. I saw it listed in that directory tool that my brother created. And I was thinking, mm -hmm. what is that? Can you explain to me what that is? So this Sangha, it's a, so the idea behind this is to create a little community in which people, people who have, usually most of them have taken classes with me and uh, we would have some conversation. Sometimes we would talk about uh, yoga practice, uh, what happens in the mat, but especially what happens uh, off the mat, beyond the mat, how somehow we take everything that we learn into the practice, how do we translate that into daily life. We talk about um, things challenges that we face in life and uh so it's like kind of a little bit of all the stuff we talk a lot about yoga you know and mm -hmm. practice and and um what's going on on the mat but also the idea is 
like kind of creating a community for speaking about topics beyond the, the yoga mat, like also spirituality, uh, emotional support, and uh, as I mentioned before, like some other challenges. Mm -hmm. That's so nice. It's so nice to have uh, like a time, especially right now to connect online and to have conversation. I think that's really great. Yeah, I made a little video today. Um, I can send you the link later on. It's like a one minute video in which I have like a little, a little short clip uh, from from the online sangha. So okay, that'd be great. Yeah. That'd be great to mm -hmm. see that. And I saw even you're great at showing on social media, like what it's like when you're teaching one on one. I've seen you share videos like that, and I think mm -hmm. this is amazing that you are building this library that then you can turn around and use online. The other mm -hmm. thing I wanted to ask you about, so you don't have a booking software yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have an online waiver and health form? You know, I I do. I have an online waiver. I do, yes. Okay, and what do and you, what is it in? You know, Shannon, the, the clients I am working with, my students, they are all people that I know, people that I that I used to do in person with them. So basically they sign up the waiver in person, most of them, but some of them they've been joining. And then I, you know, what I do, I was doing at the beginning, I was using this, uh, one of these, you know, you have like so many different softwares out there. I use this yeah. one called Clever Wa Clever Waiver, I think. Yeah. And you have like a kind of a 30-day trial or something like that. And it was pretty nice thing, but, you know, I didn't want to, like I didn't have a budget for investing into another thing. Right. So I am still in the process of finding another another way i've been listening also a lot of conversations around it and around this topic and it's actually also like a kind of a very gray area like i've been listening like many kinds of um uh, opinions on this whether it's necessary or not necessary i when i work with someone that is new i think it's important to have a waiver so what I would uh, what I would do maybe I'm starting to explore uh, Google um, Google Forms. Right. Yeah, that's I'm a great option. To explore that. Yeah. And one of the latest uh, one of the things that I've been hearing that is that uh, at least you like to have like people having something signing and then you know at least somehow you have something better than not having nothing yeah. right to have their health information that's a, mm -hmm. that's really good i'm glad that you're you're uh listening to all different sides of this because i'm i'm hearing the same thing like different people are saying different things about it mm -hmm. uh regina's asking a really good question and i have menu's website right here so you With can check it out <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh I'm wondering what other questions people have. So you use PayPal as the PayPal system. You send the PayPal link. Usually PayPal, if, if they don't live in my area, if they are people who live in here in Thailand or in Bangkok, they, it's easier for them to do the uh, bank transfer because, you know, with the mobile phone, you have right. the mobile app, which you can do uh, mobile transfer, and it's uh, less commission also because PayPal, they take commission. You have to bear that in mind too. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. And then I had asked you in the little form, um, how are you helping your students to log in and use technology? And you said by text. So you text them if they're having troubles logging in. So when when someone, let's say it's the first time they sign up for my classes in that email that I mentioned before, that copy paste email where you say, thank you for joining. This is the link to your classes. This is the, the password. And then at the end, I put a final note saying, um, you know, uh, we're going to use Zoom. Uh, if you do, are not familiar with the platform, I recommend you to, to just have a look for a few minutes. I put a, a link to Zoom. 
And I tell them that usually it's very easy. All they need to do is to click on the link and to put the password. But I tell them this is my uh, WhatsApp or and maybe if you have any problems, try to log in a few minutes before. And if you have any problems, I believe they are uh, assisting you via WhatsApp or Messenger or any other media that I can access via my phone. Oh, that's so smart. I know I went to go to an online class this week and the teacher was like, where is everyone? We were all just sitting in the waiting room because Zoom. Yes, had that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, why is, why is everyone? It's like two minutes to class and everyone's right. kind of late. Yeah, right. That's a good point that you bring here because I, it actually happened to me also once. <laughs> well, because Zoom changed everything kind of overnight. They keep updating right. their security. Right. You know, yeah. They, yeah, exactly. So they were like kind of, you know, many people is using Zoom now. We need to to do better with security. So we recommend you to use the, the waiting room. So same thing, you know, I got like two people got in and then I kind of like, of course, you get like a little notification down there, like some people is waiting. But if you don't really pay attention and you are really talking to the people who is there with you, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they maybe they are waiting for such a long time. So I decided for myself, uh, I decided not to use the, the waiting room. Right. And keep yeah. it simple. And that's it. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, here's another good question. PZ babies. I'm not sure if that's your real name. Uh, do you use music in your class? I personally don't use music. But I uh, if my students want, want to have music, I encourage them to play music because during the class, what I'm going to do, uh, you know, after the first, we meet at first, we have maybe like a couple of minutes uh, check in, how are you, blah, blah, blah. And then once we start with the class, I'm going to mute everyone. Right. So that I cannot hear what's going on. Because otherwise, the background sound, even of my voice sometimes, can be some echo. And this is like so distracting. So what I do is, <laughs> is like I mute everyone. I tell them, you know, I say, OK, this is what's going to happen. You know, they know now. They know by now. But I usually I say, I'm going to mute everyone. If there is something you need to tell me or if there is something that it's not working right now, uh, like my camera doesn't work or you cannot see the video that I'm trying to share or something, just come close to your camera and just give me a sign so I would be able to see you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know I've been to classes where people say play your own music and really that allows me to then choose do I want to play music or not I've mm -hmm. also been to some where they supply a playlist and they're like you could choose to play this on Spotify so they're following all of the because technically you can't share music unless you have rights to it you can't share it over zoom and it usually sounds terrible over Zoom mm -hmm. and like kind of mm -hmm. catches it and doesn't catch it. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm curious if people have mastered some other way. Of you know, like I think I think that uh, there might have been some people out there who have mastered this, but uh, in my case, this is not something that I really thought was like very important. Like for me, um, for my class, I don't necessarily need. Uh, if they want to, they're welcome to do so. And so I kind of leave the, the, the door open there for them to choose whether they want to play music or not. Well, you really took things up a step further with your video demo, I think. I think it's fine <laughs> that you <do>. Okay, <laughs> yes, that, I, that I'm not on the top uh, of things with music, yeah. Yeah. Regina, this is a good question. Um, what do you use to hold your phone? You said a tripod. Is there a special tripod that you use? um it's no it's not a special it's just like a tripod that i bought in a shopping mall in bangkok <laughs> <laughs> okay Nothing special. i i bought a very cheap tripod and i want to replace it so if anyone has a suggestion like oh i love this it's not crazy expensive but it's also sturdy mm. i'd be so happy <laughs> That's what I was trying to go for because my first microphone, um, it lasts me for a couple of months. I was just like, it was very cheap, but it lasts me very, very for a couple of months. And I bought an, another one, which actually still is not like a uh, very good brand or anything, but it's a little bit more quality, better price quality than the first one. So good. Is there anything that you've learned along the way that you think, okay, this would help? Like, let's say if someone decides, 
okay, I want to add this demo in. How would they do this in a way that allows for those baby steps? You know, I think the main thing, uh, the magic here, it's just practice, practice, and practice. Right. That's something, and I also, what I would encourage people, it's not to feel intimidated by technology, which of course is easy to say, but maybe, especially for people from other generations and they are not very used to technology, maybe they feel it's like a kind of a completely different world. You know, for me, when I teach classes, still, even today, sometimes I have like a little technology issues, you know, and yeah. I want to convey the message that, you know, it's fine and your students, they're going to be totally fine. As long as you are present with them and you try to have a good time, just bear in mind that the technology problems, they are going to happen. Like that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. You cannot skip that one. So try not to uh, stress much around that. I remember like one of the one of the COVID nineteen lockdown started. Uh, you know there were a lot of teachers asking me how to how to teach online and the tips and everything. And I put up a little little workshop, uh, a little webinar. And I remember like actually that was like super. A test for me because even like in one of those webinars i remember like one person suddenly like she couldn't access the same link and she had this problem and that problem and you know i was like kind of you you are put in that test of something is going to happen for sure but you know just like kind of take it easy and even uh bear in mind that even though people they know that you are in the other side of the screen but uh, you can be like kind of talking through and you can be just like say if you have someone who is having a problem and is contacting you via messenger maybe you can still like keeping an eye on what's going on it's going yeah. to happen i mean <laughs> it <laughs> life is. happens right <laughs> yeah this teacher the other day she was like okay i want to try and share this thing and she went to do it and she's like, can you hear that? And we're like, no. And she just kept trying. She was like, okay, um, I'll try one more time. And I actually really liked it because it's, you know, you don't get that if you sign up for a YouTube class, like mm -hmm. everything is so edited and perfect. Mm -hmm. And it just made me feel more like, oh yeah, we're here together in, in exactly. real time. Exactly. Yeah. more relaxed that's that's what i mean it's like kind of be relaxed about that because people it's not going to care as long as they see you know that you are like kind of trying to to fix what's going on and and try to do your best with your class um yeah it's as i say it's going something for sure it's going to happen so better sooner than later <laughs> yeah just I'm wondering if anyone who's here live has other questions for you in terms of any of the workflow of like how people sign up for your classes, any of that. Uh, Carl has a question here. Do you have a limit for your group classes is, since you can't see the whole gallery while screen mm -hmm. sharing? Uh, well, the thing with the screen share, I think it's like kind of the maximum you can see. I think it's three or four. I'm not I'm not pretty sure of that, but I think more than three people you cannot see because I'm not sure of that actually. Uh, also the groups that I've been teaching haven't been very big groups. Actually, yes, I I was teaching a, a group when I was doing the the work the webinar that I mentioned before. They were about uh, eight or nine people and when you share the screen, yes, you can only see two or three people. Right. So do I have a limit? I I do have a limit. I set up a limit of 25 people for my classes, but uh yeah. Yeah, that's You haven't uh, got there yet. You haven't got to like I, I haven't got there yet. But definitely this is one of the limitations of of Zoom, you know. It's that uh if you're sharing the screen, then you won't have access to see what everyone is seeing. Right. But think about this, uh, sometimes, uh, especially if you're teaching beginners, and sometimes you need to like kind of 
uh, workshop into something a little bit, or I mentioned before that video about the sun salutation with all of the different variations. You could basically call everyone to come to the screen and say, hey, before we start with the sun salutation, I want to show you this video. And so everyone can be watching, so they are not doing anything that may put them in danger while you are sharing the video, explaining everything, and then once you have once you have gone through all that and as there are any questions they might have then you can just talk and don't need to share again because maybe you can tell them okay now it's time for you to put into practice what you have seen from the video and i'm gonna be queuing but i'm not gonna share the video i mean there are so many ways that you can work out this that's really exciting like i'm even thinking about i have a yoga teacher training that i'm doing online in september it was supposed to be in person and i love that you can ask people like come really close and look at this thing and so i can just take video clips of those which is totally exciting. totally yeah. and share your video and i think this is one of the good things you know it's as, as everything you have good things and you have uh, things that are not so good you know you have things mm -hmm. that are like kind of limited and yeah. yeah if our connected yoga teacher listeners are wanting to connect with you and attend a class with you that's your website there with menu.com and then if they're wanting to see the all of the show notes and the links that we put together with this video in our library it's the connected yoga teacher.com slash collective you can find it on our homepage as well is there anything else, any other tips that you'd offer to yoga teachers who are deciding, okay, I'm gonna, I've been teaching on Zoom, now I'm going to try this thing. We know that technology is going to mess up. We're going to practice. Is there anything else that you can think of that would help them? I would think, I would think those are the, the main messages, you know? I mean, uh, I guess there are two groups of people. I guess there is the, the people who are totally new and they're gonna try Zoom for the first time and uh, and maybe they haven't tried that before. And I would say just take baby steps. Start maybe with your friends, with your family, and just like try and test. For those of you who have been just like using Zoom for some time and you wanna use the screen sharing, I would just say, just go for it. Just go for it. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. This is so good. Oh, I have another question. What do you do when you're teaching one on one? Because I know that's a big part of your business. Do you mm -hmm. do the same thing? Do you have that library there? Or is it mm -hmm. a completely different thing? Yeah, no, I, I use maybe with the one on one. Perhaps I use a little bit of less video sharing. And because I kind of feel that I want to pay more attention on what's going on. And I would definitely use the, the video tool, but I use them more, I use that more in a way, as I was mentioning before, just like kind of before doing something, I would okay. just like kind of go deep into that, that we are going to do so that they can see. Usually when I work one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I work with people who want to build a home yoga practice. And, um, and so a big part of my classes is for them to do on their own. So right. yes, they might see at first, we see, we, we go through any questions they might have, but then it's just like, okay, I guide maybe once or twice, but then it's just like, okay, now it's self practice time. Now you're gonna do on right. your own. <laughs> I want to pull up your Instagram because I've been following your Instagram account. I want to share this because you have some great examples of this on your Instagram. You had this great example with, it was like one of your students. Yes, with Nam, my friend Nam. She is my Thai yoga teacher. Did I already pass it? Yes, yes. It's uh, uh, right underneath it's Wise Minds. That one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the one. I feel like I can play it here. Can you see it playing? Uh, oh, I can hear some music. Yes, there it is. I love how this is you teaching this. Yeah. And as you can see here, this is her day number eight. So I'm not saying much. And right. this is the part where I explain, I go into depth. And I tell that this is how we do, and then she does on her own. 
So this is the way I work one-on-one. -on -one. Usually we use the video before just to get into, into depth of whatever we're going to do. And then she's going to practice on her own. And here at the end, I'm queuing a little bit more because that was oh. like kind of something we were working new that day. I have to stop it because it's playing some music. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't. I couldn't hear that. I love it. Um, okay, so here are some other questions. Okay. Very helpful. And Valerie saying, thank you. Love the option for screen sharing. I have a workshop coming up, and I absolutely will use this option to share information before practice. That's so good. Mm -hmm. Judy's saying, oh, go ahead. Yes, I want to I wanna say that another really useful tool, especially if you want to kind of workshop stuff, and, and you can see a little bit of that in the video that you just played, but because it's like a very fast motion video, you cannot see it very clearly. In Zoom, you have, when you are sharing the screen, if you go up to the top of the screen, you have an option, which is basically, you have different things that you can do, and you can use a pen. So for instance, you can pause the video and you can use that pen just to play a little bit uh, with uh, explain things about alignment or, you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is what Valerie was asking then. Is there a whiteboard option? So that's the one. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. You have a, a whiteboard option. Yeah. Uh, have you it's, used it at all? I haven't used the whiteboard option, but my this girl I'm teaching the class here, she's my Thai teacher. She teaches me classes via Zoom and she uses the, the whiteboard option. So if there is some content that you want to share, you can absolutely use that if it's like kind of a workshop of a training or a training or something like that. Yeah. I think that's the pen option. So you drew, you were drawing on the screen as you were teaching then. You can, with the pen, actually, you can dry on the top of the video. That's so cool. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. I'm so you can, of for all instance, of our anatomy people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For instance, say, like, you pause your video into while you are doing triangle pose, and now you're going to take your pen and, and draw a line from middle finger to middle finger, and then try to keep the chest open so you can, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's oh, that really, style. for the visual learners, it's so helpful. <laughs> for the visual learners, exactly. Yeah. That really helps for that. Have you ever used a camera or do you feel like your computer is as good? So Judy Menu uses his phone. What kind of phone do you have? It's a uh, Samsung Galaxy 9 Plus, which okay. is actually, it's, it's one of the better, good cameras. But you can use, I would say, any decent camera. doesn't need to be... Yeah. Yeah. Another thing, um, before I answer the questions, before it slips from my mind, you know how I told you that uh, sometimes I use uh, also image sharing? Yes. You want to make sure that if you are sharing image on Zoom, which is a great option, like say for a yin yoga class, there is probably not going to be a lot of movement. So maybe you just need to share a photo. Make sure when you finish using that photo, you need to close it. Because I think after a number of three photo open, Zoom, it won't allow people, it won't allow people to see what's going on. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I realized that because I had this in yoga class and I had all the, all the class, it was just like kind of photos. It was some video that day. And so I would open a photo uh, with my computer program and then I would stop sharing but the photo will remain open with my computer program you know what I mean yeah and then I would share and I would share another photo and okay they would see but then after the second of the or the third I could see my computer that I was sharing the photo but people on the other side they were like we cannot see anything and so I realized that I actually had to close the previous photo just like a little technical stuff. That's so interesting. I've been sharing some photos when we do our Q and A, we have one next Tuesday mm -hmm. and I have been putting them in a slide deck and it seems like a little more work. Like I've been doing it in Canva and making a slide deck. Mm -hmm. and maybe that, maybe, that yeah, maybe a slide deck. It's, it's okay. Maybe yeah. it's, it's not a problem. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so we answered the whiteboard question. Uh, Carl was saying that was incredible to see. And I just put the link to your Instagram right directly to that, um, that post that we were just looking at. Mm -hmm. Valerie says, thanks. And Regina says, thanks for sharing. This is very inspiring for my next lecture on Ayurveda. So that's so awesome. cool. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Let me grab your You're website welcome. again in case someone has other questions, if they decide that they want to show up and do some private yoga with you or join a group class, or if they want to work further with you, then they can reach out and say, okay, can you help me with this thing? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yes, they can. They can always uh, send me an email, manu at with manu.com or they can reach me via any of my social media. I am with dot Manu in Instagram, with Manu on Facebook. Yeah. Good stuff. I'm so excited. Well, thank you so much for your time today. You're very Thanks welcome. Thanks for walking us through this. Bitsy, thank you. Thank you to everyone who's been here live or for the replay. And again, if you're like, where is this going? Uh, it's moving over to the collective. So it's a dollar to join for the first month and then you'll get access to all of our videos like this with the links. We'll get the show notes up there soon. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Have a good evening, Manu. Have a good sleep. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.